Hi, I'm Kathy Ayasufi, the first author of this work. And I'm Aaron Johnson, the corresponding author of this work. I have a neuroimmunology program here at Mayo Clinic. We're excited to tell you about our newest study that's published in the journal Brain, where we are looking at how CNS insults, including cancer, contribute to peripheral immunosuppression. Glioblastoma is incurable and associated with severe peripheral immunosuppression. Considerable efforts are currently focused on developing vaccination strategies and immunotherapies. All immune modulatory therapies require a functional and intact immune system and will be ineffective in the presence of immunosuppression. GVM patients often present with very low T cell counts, and uh, for example, their CD4 T cell counts are so low that they've been compared to AIDS patients. They also have very low expression levels of the antigen presenting molecule MHC class 2 under blood drive monocytes. We asked if we could recapitulate these features in a mouse model. Indeed, we were able to use the GL261 model of glioma to recapitulate low frequencies of CD4 T cells in the blood, declining levels of MHC class 2 on leukocytes, as well as we found a modest but significant increase in bone marrow resident T cells. This was previously published by a different group. Additionally, the spleen where immune cells uh, reside also got smaller in size in mice with brain cancer compared to control. We next focus on the thymus, which is the immune organ where T cell development occurs. We found that glioma bearing mice had very small thymi compared to controls. We also found that this thymic involution was not specific to the GL261 glioma, as when we implanted mice with B16 melanoma in the brain, we also observed similar, a similar thymic involution. Indeed, this phenomena was not even brain cancer specific, as a variety of other brain injury models reproduce thymic involution, suggesting that this is brain injury and not just cancer. So we wanted to know how this thymic involution occurs, and in particular, we wanted to focus on the role of soluble factors. Therefore, we use a model called parabiosis, in which two mice are surgically joined so that they share a circulation. In this case, one mouse will have a glioma, while the other mouse will not have any brain injury, and we will ask what happens to the thymus of the mouse with no brain injury that is exposed to the circulation of the glioma bearing mouse. When we did this experiment, we verified that this brain tumor is non-metastatic and is only in this mouse, and that indeed this glioma bearing mice, as before, had very low CD4 T cell counts. When we looked at the attached parabion that did not have a brain tumor, we saw a parallel effect on CD4 T cell counts, ending up with very similar no, uh, numbers. We next asked what happens to the thymus, and we found that the thymus of both parabions that are attached together, one is glioma bearing, the other is not, are significantly involuted compared to control, suggesting sharing of blood circulation is sufficient to induce thymic involution, even in the absence of brain injury. Since parabiosis pointed us to the direction of soluble factors, we next asked, is there evidence of immunosuppression in serum of glioma bearing mice? For this, we isolated serum from naive tumor negative or tumor positive mice and added them to T cell cultures that had very strong stimulation. These T cells were labeled with CFSC, and this is a dye that when T cells proliferate gets diluted, and this can be detected. As you can see, naive and serum isolated from naive and tumor negative mice did not have an effect on proliferation. This is why serum isolated from glioma bearing mice completely abrogated T cell proliferation. We next wanted to know what is the molecular weight of immunosuppressive molecules in the serum. So we used a series of filtration strategies and we found that molecules larger than 100 kilodalton confer immunosuppression in the serum, while molecules smaller than 100 kilodalton are not immunosuppressive. The importance of this fact, uh, this project is that now we know a variety of brain insults induce a multifaceted immunosuppression affecting many immune organs, you, uh, likely through soluble factors. So it is important to understand what these soluble factors are so that we can reverse them in order to help not only GVM patients, 
but also a large cohort of patients with acute and chronic neurological trauma. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you reading about our work.